But it's time for newspaper review. I have my papers here. And so let's find out what the Ghanaian Times is saying. On top of the news, well, they have it here as well. Courts to sit on weekends and holidays. And this is according to the Supreme Court. Uh, the CJ yesterday uh, talked about this at the farewell party held in Anna as she retires officially tomorrow. Now, police also nabs a man for stealing NIA computer laptop. Road minister orders demolition of illegal drains, arrest of Ghanaian and three foreigners. And NMC appoints board members of state-owned media. Now, Business and Financial Times, let's see. Um, okay, so Talo Betts turn around on relocated car power ship. Now, economy records slowest growth in 12 months. And Echo Afeji appointed GSEMD. Let's go to the Daily Guide that says that Supreme Court redefines 48-hour detention rule. And so um, if it's weekend or holidays, it is inclusive. So now the police don't have to wait for the weekend to be over so they can start counting the days in case you get arrested on a Friday or a Saturday or on a holiday. Now, brutal fight at House of Chiefs. All roads lead to Mensha and EC passes major test. Now, Business Finder says GDP growth falls to 5.6 in third quarter due to drop in manganese and gold production, according to the GSS. Honorable Andrew Ejapa Mesa is joining me. Good morning. How are you? Morning. I'm well. And he's the MP for Second D constituency. Everything okay? By his grace. Yeah. I'm fine. I know it's your daughter's birthday. Yes, it so is. So we're going to start off with a wish to her. Absolutely. I'm sure she's of course, watching. I need to say good morning to our church viewers. Yeah. And, uh, All right. Particularly my constituents, and to take this opportunity to wish my special daughter, mm. my last girl. Well, I have only one girl, and okay. she happens to be the last. Mm. Alison Renee, today she turns five. Oh. Uh, Mommy, Andrew, James, and I wish you a happy birthday. We love you so much. Happy Enjoy birthday uh, to, what's her name again? Alison Renee. Alison Renee, nice name, and I hope you enjoy your day. We'll send you a gift. It's not a promise because I know when you go to a <laughs> Mr. Daddy, where's the gift you promise? But anyways, let's go straight to our first story. And our NDC um, well, correspondents will join us very soon. So outgoing Chief Justice says she'll spend her retirement on issues of excellence and shoring up Ghana's constitution. And uh, this was done during the farewell party that was held in her honor. So her ladyship, Sophia Akufu, also said part of her time will be used to mentor young people. She was speaking during a send-off held in her honor, which I said earlier as well. And so that's what happened yesterday. And I think she's done a fantastic job, has she not? Absolutely. Mm. Uh, I, I did not have the opportunity to practice a lot okay. uh, uh, when she was at the Supreme Court because, you know, she went on an international assignment for, for a bit. Yeah. So even though I appeared before her uh, on a few occasions, once that much, and when she came back and became CJ, I had gone into active politics. And mm. my practice is essentially limited to solicitor's work, okay. even though I get to go to the commercial court every now and then. All right. But of course, I've read many of her judgments. Uh, I have heard her speak uh, on, on several you know, occasions, uh, even before she became CJ and post her becoming CJ. Yeah. Her, her pension for uh, excellence. You know, she had occasion to reject some courthouses that yeah. had been, you know, made available for the judicial, judicial service. You know, flatly rejected them and insisted that the environment within which judges work, you know, ought to ought be, to be. Uh, mm. uh, uh, conducive. And yeah. indeed, her stance on the quality of legal education and uh, legal representation. Mm. Uh, that's one is something is that I share, of course. Oh, I mean, you also agree. Well, hold on. Absolutely. Hold on, hold on to that. Let's just take a look at her speech yesterday at the farewell ceremony, and then we'll come back and talk about some of the things she mentioned during the ceremony. Superior and lower court judges gave an account of her stewardship as one interested in improving the welfare of judges and condition of courts buildings. She's very interested in the welfare of judges. That is the first. Then second, the legal reforms. Her vision is to make sure that we get the best caliber of lawyers into the system. And thirdly, she's the first chief justice who has taught all the courts in the country to see to it that we, we have good infrastructure. She took office at a time that the judiciary had not fully recovered from the Anas Exposé and to carry on and rebuild the judiciary 
to the standard that Ghana expects of our judiciary was an enormous task. But I think carrying on from there, she's been able to discharge her functions very well. Before she took office as the Chief Justice, career magistrates who had admission to do the professional law course at the Ghana School of Law were granted steady leave without pay. But when she came, she changed the policy. And there were career magistrates who had uh, finished the professional law course, but they were still career magistrates. She came and converted them from career magistrate to professional magistrates. Sophia Akufu is leaving the bench as the longest serving Supreme Court judge. She will be remembered for her ruling in Moko versus Kuma, which defined company law in Ghana and declared that a company is a separate personality from its directors. Her recent ruling preventing police from holding suspects in custody during weekends without trial will no doubt stand out. Her decision not to open up legal education is one that has given rise to divided opinion and made prospective law students bitter. I really mean it when I said that uh, I'm going to spend the rest of my retirement on issues of excellence. Excellence in work that, that are done for the people of Ghana. Excellence in our lives. Excellence in ensuring and shoring up our constitution. And in that vein, I'll spend a lot of my time mentoring. Firstly, mentoring young people, but uh, older people who want to be mentored too. I'm there. I'm sure there's going to be a long queue of older people waiting to be mentored by the Chief Justice. I'm excited because she is a lady and the fact that she occupied that office alone has given hope to a lot more women. And she also mentioned that she expects more women to be appointed uh, to the Supreme Court and other top, top offices as well. So Andrea Jafamesa is still here with me. He is the MP for Second D constituency. And you were just talking about the fact that you agree with her assertion that legal education should not be made what, cheap or we should not reduce a standard? Absolutely. Why? Uh, of course. I mean, it's a profession. And so you expect that anybody who goes through that training mm. ought to have the full complement of competencies that is required of any profession. I'm not yeah. sure that you expect any less from accountants and doctors, for that matter, or dentists, mm -hmm. you know. And so I, well, that is not to say that legal education should not be opened up okay. for more people to have access. Which is but what a lot of the students have been absolutely asking for. Insisting on, on, on quality training. Mm. Uh, look, I mean, uh, you can't be a good lawyer if you don't spend uh, more than two thirds of your time in the law library. I mean, uh, it's not something that you can do uh, you know, and, 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 and come out with the key competencies that, that you require. Mm -hmm. You know, I recall when I was in law faculty, you know, even walking to Commonwealth or to go and take a nap, uh, by which time you would be awake, you know, as you walk all the way to Commonwealth or because during those days, you know, uh, we the mobile West could not afford uh, to, to drive. And not many people were driving when, when I was in Legon anyway, yeah. you know, so... So it was better for you to stay and, and take a nap in the library. You know, so, 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 so you, you spend more time there because uh, a good lawyer is the one who really knows how to find the law. And the law can only be found in the law books. These are no cheap books either. And so it is not something that you can afford to buy them and keep them home. Mm -hmm. I know that, you know, with the advent of technology, you know, many of the books are available online. And so people tend to uh, you know, stay away from the library and, and still get the content that, that they need. But I, I think that it cannot be again said that compromises cannot be made in terms of the quality of legal yeah. education. And so whatever it takes to ensure that people who come out of law school have what it takes mm. to, to, to uh, execute and perform for the benefit of people who engage them 
to assist them with legal services ought, ought to be uh, spot on. But then the question again is, so if we're trying to ensure that there's quality um, in the legal education system, then why are we allowing a lot of institutions? Because now a number of institutions offer law courses. And so it's easy for me to just go and enroll as a law student and study to a certain level, write the exam, and then hopefully get into Makola. That's, that's why are we the, making it that's easy? That's the challenge that we have with um, two institutions uh, uh, regulating uh, our educational uh, sector when it comes to uh, uh, law training. Yeah. Uh, the National Accreditation Board essentially accredits academic institutions. And the General Legal Council then set up legal, professional legal training. Yeah. So question is, should there be some uh, linkage between mm -hmm. the two with respect to how many legal institutions or academic training institutions that are licensed to train people who study law as a subject yeah. uh, relative to uh, the General Legal Council that sets up the law schools to train professional lawyers. And, and so that conversation ought to go on. Mm. But it was interesting, uh, when uh, Justice Tokonu was uh, being vetted, yeah. she suggested that her view would be that we revert or adopt the English model mm -hmm. where solicitors are trained separate from barristers. Okay. In Ghana, everybody is a barrister and a solicitor, but in England, we have only barristers and, and solicitors. solicitors. Okay. So that then creates room for people who want to study law train as professional lawyers and do pure solicitors work. Mm -hmm. uh, a clear channel for that kind of people and another channel for those who want to do courtroom advocacy, uh, yeah. barristers. And, and that in itself uh, offers the opportunity to increase the numbers of people who yeah. can get legal training. I think that that is a conversation mm. that ought to be interrogated and, and explored uh, so that we can get more people assess legal education because mm. the truth of the matter is that you have a lot of people who are going through law school but don't intend to practice law yeah they just want to have legal training so that they can uh, apply that in, in, in their the line of work, of work and, yeah. and and so it's important that we give those people the opportunity mm -hmm. you know uh, one All may right. argue that that in itself if you really don't need the law why bother why going bother? to study and blocking uh, Other people younger chances. people who really want to go and study law, yeah. uh, the, the, the opportunity to, but of course you can't stop anybody from acquiring knowledge Definitely. in any particular field. And so, uh, of course, facilities is an issue as well. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I believe that the quality of instruction, you know, such that also. you have all these numbers of people failing exams uh, and that uh, is a also a, a worry. And, yeah. and so it's a, it's, a, it's a comprehensive matter that ought to be addressed holistically so that we can uh, uh, deal with the issues. Because, of course, our population is increasing. Yeah, And, and we minute. can't afford to have... Now, when I was in law school, it was only one Makola. Mm -hmm. You know, but now we have Gimpa, we have Legon, uh, uh, KNUST. Yeah. Still uh, inadequate. And, and so ways ought to be found to increase the, the, the available spaces for people. For people. To, yeah. All right. Well, definitely. And we'll just take a look at her speech one more time about what she intends to do uh, post-CJ work. And so take a look at that and we'll continue. Turn out. Her decision not to open up legal education is one that has given rise to divided opinion and made prospective law students bitter. I really mean it when I said that uh, I'm going to spend the rest of my retirement on issues of excellence. Excellence in work that, that are done for the people of Ghana. Excellence in our lives. Excellence in ensuring and shoring up our constitution. And in that vein, I'll spend a lot of my time mentoring. Firstly, mentoring young people. but. Uh, Older people who want to be mentored to I'm there. And that's the Chief Justice of Fire Ekufu speaking there. And also joining us now, we have Kojo Chum Buafo. He is the former Executive Secretary of the Ghana Free Zones. And he joins Andre Japamesa, MP for Secondary. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm good. Everything I'm good. okay? Everything is perfect. Yeah? yeah. Is, are we coming back to power? Um, if it's God's will, yeah. 
But I'm I'm sure I, I'm sure you can see that God has already decided. That's what that and, NDC will NDC is coming back to yeah. power. Yeah. Well, the Afrobarometer didn't indicate that, but don't worry, we're not even going back to that conversation. Afro, Afrobarometer, no one will never talk about. Okay, but then it's a representation <laughs> of what people think. You know, uh, Bella, my personal opinion, I don't think that we have any empirical study in this country that accurately predicts voter behavior. Mm. You see, many of these people who say they are doing um, stochastic analysis of voter trends in this yeah. country, for example, nobody has told me where they went. Okay. You understand? If, if I was conducting such polls, the first thing, the baseline argument I'll be making is, I went to a constituency that changes hands every time a, a, a power changes hands, for example. I'm not saying they didn't do that, I'm not saying they did. But I don't think, a lot, a lot of the information looks like outliers. Whilst I'm not questioning how they got to where they've got into, mm. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm still not 100% sold. Okay. They All may right. have they may have some genuine you know um, things that they are raising and things that we should be um, you know, talking about and looking at. But yeah, I'm, 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 I'm glad you qualified it by saying that this is his personal opinion and not an opinion because of the entire clearly, party. Uh, the position that has been taken by his party is clearly inconsistent from the Which, position. Uh, now, I only hope. We'll, you don't we'll get leave this conversation. We'll Kansa, leave this conversation Kansa, and Kansa. let's still talk about uh, the Chief Justice. Because so the your Supreme party Court is one to suspend has people in who disagree a unanimous with decision position. ruled that the... Um, okay, so let me just give you that information again. So the Supreme Court has in a unanimous decision ruled that the maximum 48 hours um, that, you know, people arrested are kept in prison for should include weekends and should include holidays as well. So the police has to detain an arrested person in custody without being granted bill of extension. Um, and now they say it should include weekends, public holidays and periods of civil unrest. Now, this is to take effect in six months time. Take a look. In the unanimous decision by the court delivered by outgoing Chief Justice, Justice Sophia Kufu, the law prohibiting keeping people in police custody for more than 48 hours includes weekend and holidays. The seven-member panel consequently directed the Inspector General of Police, registrars of the various courts to ensure that the ruling of the court is brought to the attention of all interest parties for purposes of its enforcement. Their decision follows an appeal application by lawyer Martin Pebu invoking the original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court for an interpretation of Article 14 Clause 3 of the 1992 Constitution which states that a person who is arrested, restricted or detained a for the purpose of bringing him before a court in execution of an order of a court or b upon reasonable suspicion of his having committed or been about to commit a criminal offense under the laws of Ghana and who is not released shall be brought before a court within 48 hours after the arrest restriction or detention. Martin Pebu in his suit sought aid release from the Supreme Court. Amongst them was a declaration that a true and proper interpretation of Article 14.3 of the Constitution a Saturday, a Sunday, a public holiday, any time during a civil unrest and any other day that the courts in Ghana cannot sit during strike by judicial service staff or during a strike by any other stakeholder that will prevent the court from sitting will be counted in reckoning the 48 hours within which a person arrested or detained on suspicion of committing a crime and not released must be brought before a court under Article 14.3 of the Constitution of Ghana. All right, and so that is something that has gotten a lot of people excited. They're discussing, and this is a fight that has been championed by private legal practitioner Martin Pebu. He started this in September 2016 when he dragged the Attorney General to the Apex Court and he demanded a declaration that portions of the Holiday Act that bar the courts from sitting on those occasions to deal with cases that affect personal liberties are unconstitutional. And so a good day in the history of law and justice in the country? Yes, I, I believe so. Uh, and I think that it's appropriate to commend Martin for his public interest uh, uh, spiritedness mm. because this is not the first time that he's challenged the constitutionality or otherwise of yeah. 
a provision uh, in our statute books. Uh, indeed, uh, he challenged the uh, amendment of Section 96 of the Criminal Offences Act, mm -hmm. which uh, made some offences non bailable uh, and successfully so. And indeed, this time around, he's uh, sought the interpretation of the Supreme Court for a declaratory relief to the effect that the 48 rule that is provided for under Article 12 of our, of our Constitution ought to be adhered to strictly. Mm. And that it should not be the case that when people are arrested on a Friday, and we know our police officers abusing that provision yeah. uh, uh, across the country. Uh, obviously, the 48-day rule, 48 48-hour 48 rule is still in place. It is just because Sundays happen to be a non-working day. And so then they will wait and take you to court on the next available working day. Yeah. So the Supreme Court is saying that in those circumstances, when you are arrested on a Friday, then courts ought to be available for you to uh, be, 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 be brought before it, even if it's a Sunday, mm -hmm. so that um, 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 your matter can be dealt with. Uh, and so I think that uh, it's a good day for, for human rights. Uh, obviously, that in itself will come with some administrative challenges. And I guess that's the reason for the six-month window that was given to the judicial service mm -hmm. to take steps to ensure that, I'm not sure, all courts, uh, to the extent that we have vacation courts, which continues to sit during legal vacations. Yeah. We can have some designated courts. Uh, indeed, courts sit on Saturdays mm -hmm. to deal with uh, uh, snitch-related offenses. And so asking some specific courts to sit on Sunday to deal with matters of this nature uh, would require some administrative step to be taken. And so I think that it's a, it's a, it's a success for all of us, yeah. uh, championed by my very good friend, Martin. All right. But yeah. has it not taken too long? And that's the question that people are asking. How many years has it been? Why have we waited this long to have something like this? And I'll, I'll let uh, Mr. Kujochumbafu speak on that. Um, Bella, whilst I congratulate um, the court for effecting what should have effected, been effected a long time ago, I worry about the six-month right. um, gestation period, if you will. Why do you worry? Um, because people that people's rights are still uh, being abused. As we speak today, the National Communication Office of the NDC has been summoned to the police station over very nebulous um, uh, supposed report, yeah. and they want him to report on Friday. Uh, my my brother, uh, the esteemed counsel sitting here, knows what. Uh, knows, I'm sure he's had to go to um, police stations um, hustling on Friday afternoons to get his clients out of there because he knows that it's an administrative maneuver the um, authorities use to keep people in, in cells over the weekend. So why six months? Why not immediately? Um, I also hope and pray that whilst we are, we are advocating that this happens, some people do not find a loophole to crawl out of by saying the judge was not sitting, the judge is in the wardrobe or the judge is in his chambers or whatever, and therefore you still have to stay, um, you know, where you are until that judge is ready. The yeah. vacation judge was not ready. It, it, there are all kinds of loopholes that let's accept it in the spirit in which the Supreme Court have um, um, promulgated it so that people's rights are not abused. Uh, once again, let me congratulate the court because we've got, gone a long way. You know, some time ago, prisoners could not vote. Somebody yeah. went to court and changed that. Um, the non bailable yeah. offences act. Somebody went to court and changed that. We are, we are, we are getting there as 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 a, a society and as a nation. Mm -hmm. And I, I I commend them for it. All right. All right. Well, so he says that the six months is a little too long, but I understand that, like you said, there are processes, and so we can't just get up and decide that this is going to be an instant rule, uh, and so we I, adhere, adhere to it. I, I, I would have wished that he had made that point without drawing in the Sami Jinfi angle. Okay. 
and who would at least for once deal with these matters without the political. No, it's not politics. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is he you, not indicating you, that if in case Sami oh, should hold on, hold also on. be detained, this, then that means that he's going to spend the weekend? Like, uh, no, uh, uh, that's uh, why I said that you would have been... I heard you loud no, and no, clear. No, no, you didn't listen to me. I was talking Because I was you talking are saying about... that because of the six-month gestation period... Mm -hmm. I said words, within that period, people should write... No, has been I invited didn't... to the police station and it's interesting. They ask that he comes on a Friday. And so it's a possibility. Mm -hmm. Suggesting. Uh -huh. You see, you're using the word suggesting. But that's exactly what you sought to do here. You see, let's not, let's not go through oh, this. So you see, it would have been useful to make your point without bringing in Sami Jinfi. Because this not in is the country. practice that has existed all these years. Where people are arrested on a Friday. Mm -hmm. In some instances, bail is granted. In some instances, the police abuse that 48-hour rule and keep you in and say that, well, no, courts do not sit on a Sunday. Okay. The Supreme Court, in its wisdom, I wasn't in court. I do not even know the arguments that were made by both parties mm. that informed the decision of the court to give a six-month period for whatever administrative mechanism ought to be put in place to be put in there. But the position is that, as we speak, pre the ruling in the Supreme Court only yesterday, people were invited on a Friday and kept in through to Monday. Mm. I hope that Sami Jinfi doesn't suffer the fate when he is, uh, as it were, uh, when he appears before the police tomorrow for whatever that uh, or complaint that has been lodged, and that you'll be granted bail within 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 the the. Yeah. the the, the day so that he goes home and appears another time that the police is ready to prosecute whatever charges that will be leveled against him. But let's try and stay away from the politicking. This is a, a judgment that we shall all celebrate. Uh, well, you may say that maybe three months would have been ideal and we can interrogate it and see whether indeed the Chief Justice who is vested with the administrative authority over the judicial service mm -hmm. would be able to set up the court that would function on a Sunday within uh, the, the three-month period. In any All event, right. I'm not sure that the court would have said that wait till six months before you implement this decision. Even though I haven't seen the judgment, it would make sense to me mm -hmm. for them to have said that within six months, make sure that courts are put in place that deals with... Which is what I believe was said, on, on that yes. within six months. And so it, would take so it could be tomorrow. It, it, it could be Monday. Effect. Bella, okay. I'm very surprised that Ejapa, like I said, not only did he not listen to me, but he's gone from frying pan to fire and reiterated the same thing I said. Mm. Why are you saying I'm politicking? Politics is defined as the business of the people. Sami Jenfi is a citizen of this country. What I was saying was that the gestation period for me was too long. I commended the court, you heard me commending the court, and I even cited instances of how much we have progressed. Mm. What I said, and you yourself have even used the word, the A word that I didn't want to use, abuse. Yeah. So it is quite possible that given the fact that that gestational period has not, is not fully functional, tomorrow, Sami Jenfi's rights will be abused. Is that not so? Could be. Could be, exactly. So what I, I was saying was that I would have wished that it was happening as instantaneously as it could possibly be. You yourself use the word that, that over time, the police have abused the rights of, of people, especially, look, Ejapa, you're a lawyer. You know, especially, for example, and, and let me use this analogy. Example, somebody owes somebody money. So he goes to report the person uh, um, on Friday morning. The person is arrested on Friday afternoon that you owe the person money. There's no uh, 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 way in which your case can be taken to court by Friday afternoon, so you stay until Monday. Yeah. It happens all the time. So it has nothing to do with politics. And Sami Jeffy is a citizen of this country. Politics or no politics. Are you saying politicians don't have rights? Well, or the, what are you saying? The reason you're saying within six months is to give time to I make understand arrangements that. for That's why I said, Bella, I understand offices. all that. That's why I said I would have wished. Mm -hmm. Fish may be my favorite dish, but without no money, it's just a wish. So I would have wished, it's my wish, 
That's we, all. We can't just get up and start paying people. I understand that. That's that said, it's my wish. Okay. It's an, I, 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 am aspi I, I was aspiring that it would have been immediate, almost immediate. Mm. That's all. All right, but, but, but tell me about Sami Jinfi's issue and what exactly is I the hear reason why. He has been, I, I have, I've read that he has, and I haven't spoken to him, but I've okay. read that he has been invited um, uh, to the cyber crime unit of the, of the Ghana police uh, um, force. Yeah. And he's supposed to report tomorrow. And the complaint was made from Flagstaff House. Who made the complaint? We don't know. What what, and whilst I am not here to um, categorically say or otherwise that uh, the police don't have a right to do their work, I'm still finding it a little difficult to imbibe. That's that's just where I'm standing right now. Mm. I I want to see what happens tomorrow. Okay. But I'm 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 just not terribly excited about some of these things that s would seem to be happening, you know, at the behest of, of certain people I would deem are in authority in this country. Let's, let's progress. Let's, let's progress. You don't think we're progressing? I mean, if a complaint has been lodged against him, how is that a retrogression? It's a retrogression in the sense that if you've been ar around as long as some of us have been around, um, it looks like a duck. It walks like a duck. It's quacking like a duck. It's a duck. Following his mommy's straight lines and pooping all over the floor. It's a duck. That's mm. what it is. Okay. You want to speak on, on, well, on this particular I haven't, issue as well? I haven't. I cannot confirm. Because I only saw somebody's Facebook post. Okay. Asking, so Sami Jinfi has been reported to the police CID, question mark. That's all I've seen. Mm. And so I can't sit here and speculate. Okay. Uh, and he himself uh, admitted that he, he hears as to whether it's true or not. I'm you are not, not in sure. A position to tell. W but well, of course. Okay. If a complaint has been lodged to the extent that Sami Jinfi is a citizen, as he said, mm -hmm. and is entitled to all the liberties that citizens are enjoined to enjoy under our, under our constitution. In the same vein, any individual, whether in the Flagstaff House, Jubilee House, or any other place within this jurisdiction, if he feels that some individual has made some I'm speculating because I don't know. Okay. We'll leave as it a there citizen. Then and we'll also has a right it. to lodge a complaint to the Ghana police I, service. I, I, I totally accept that. All right. Yes. I totally accept that. So okay. let's wait for the issues to play out. I'm sure the details would be known as the days go by. They would be. And then we can interrogate whether it looks like a duck, quacks like a duck, walks like a duck, <laughs> and so it's a duck. <laughs> so it's a duck. Or, and that or, he's been here long or enough. It, or it's on no, or it's on your plate. Or it's on your plate that he's very well picky. Like you suggested. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> to the roads and highways uh, minister who also was in the news yesterday after he ordered for the demolition of an illegal drain constructed near the association international school where i hear 22 um story building was being put up and so some turkish developers were seen on the site and picked up i hear they've been granted bail uh, but everybody's hailing the roads and highways minister it looks like the headmistress of association international also mentioned that they had been complaining there was a court order for them to stop work but they were still going ahead with it and as you could see they had laid blocks on parts of the road that was obstructing traffic i mean let, let, let's take a look at this story and then we'll come back so you can get the full details of this particular one a concrete barricade had been erected by the Turkish developers who are putting up a 22-story building close to the Association International School at the airport residential area. Portions of the road which had been blocked were developing cracks. The blockade was also causing vehicular traffic. And national security should stop the construction. And hey. anybody engaged in it, please arrest all of them. Arrest hey. all of them. Hey. 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 The sector minister ordered the arrest of the three foreign nationals for constructing the fence wall. For causing destruction to public property 
That's why they should be arrested and put before court. They so, should be prosecuted. So what are the punitive measures for people who go contrary to the rules? No, they should be arrested and, and punished no matter who they are. But these are not Ghanaians who no. are arrested. You've arrested foreigners. I yes. Want one yes. So if they go, to, if they are arrested and they go to court, whoever is behind this property, who is supporting them, who, uh, uh, whoever is a Ghanaian behind them, no, it will come out. The minister warned he will not tolerate any individuals or group of persons who will initiate development on rules reservations. I am going around and any body, any company, any individual, no, that might have encroached the road corridor and the road reservation. We are going to do the same. This is just the beginning. And even if it's a building which has entered into the road reservation, I will put it down. Residents allege the developers have no permit for the project. They call CEO this, they of they they call, so come and see. And they call this, you are elected for the people of Ghana, not Thank for you. your own self-interest. Thank you. Come and stand we and behave the for the people of Ghana. That is why we elect you into, into position. Encroachment on land has become a household issue with landowners selling the same pieces of land to multiple owners. What kind of nonsense is this? What kind of nonsense is this? Electing blocks in the middle of the road. And that's the Roads and Highways Minister, Kwesi Amwako Atta, uh, who decided to go there himself to ensure that work um, around that area would be halted. And this comes after many complaints uh, filed against this particular developer. It looks like it all fell on deaf ears, even after a court order indicating that they stop working on that particular building and this is just in an area where we have a school and i'm hearing that there are cracks in the building in the school and it's causing a lot of traffic in the area as well even last night there were claims that they had gone back to continue work as well but the question then is who granted them the permit to even construct this building in that particular area and why were they still defying court orders um bella in this country i regret to tell you that many people build without permits. Some of them even go as far as writing on their own walls. Stop, Stop work. work. I've heard that. Yeah. Okay. But let's move beyond that. I'm yet to cite any ordinance that allows people to put up a 22-story building on a single family plot, because that is how those plots were allocated at the time it was allocated, 22 stories go down like 15 to 20 meters because they, don't have, they wouldn't have parking, so they have to go down. In a country where, or in a city where most of the terrain in this city is below the water table, some areas of this Accra here are earthquake prone. So, you take a JCB and a Mohammed down there, zzz, you are cracking the walls of people who live around that place. And some of the people who live around that particular place, uh, Madam Elizabeth Ohini lives there. Mm. Um, Nekamate View lives there. Mrs. Blukwalote lives there. My parents live there. My father is 86. My mother is 76. They all live in that, if you know the history of that area, many of the people who live there are elderly people can you imagine what they are going through and these people put up put up this they, they they go down this far and then they affect the road affect the school kids even that construction zone is very dangerous for the school kids because association international school which i mean the, the the bulk of the school is on the left side of the road but they have dormitories on the right side the nursery is on the right side so in that road the kids keep crossing. Go and see what has happened to the road. But these people, for the sake of whatever it is they are doing, they keep doing it. And it had to take a minister to come there with police and national security to stop this. First of all, let me commend the minister. I think if all the 129 ministers were doing what he's doing, maybe we'll be complaining less about friends and family. I think he did an excellent job, and I will commend him. Mr. Makwata, if you are listening, it's me commending you, so you've done well. I 
think that we should progress further and make sure that all the illicit constructions that are going on around Accra for the sake of whatever it is that is going on should be stopped. We should also look at the people who allow them to do these things. Because you cannot go, Bella, you cannot go to Turkey and do this. If you have ever been to Turkey before, those people are ordered. Mm. You can't go there and do that. So why are we doing it here? You can't go to China and do that. Hmm. There is no ordinance. As far as I want somebody to correct me. Whether the ordinances have changed to allow people to go that high in residential areas. Okay. Let, let me bring Andrew let, in let, let me just, Okay, let you want to land finish. on this? Yeah, let right. me finish. Because, because I'm in that industry, I can tell you for free that there isn't. But people do it and defy it anyway. Areas that were demar demarcated for residential areas have now become commercial areas. You have, I'm sure you've been around and seen people who simply dump sand and stone in the middle of the road because they are doing construction in their homes or on their properties instead of putting it on their properties. And then when we finish and the rains fall, we claim that we are getting flooded. I mean, how much more can this indiscipline go on? How much more? Andrew, let me bring you in because then this clearly is a new construction that is taking place. Um, um, what's the process like if you have to get a permit, you know, to be able to construct? And why are they allowing certain people to defy the law? Because clearly there was a court order to ask them to stop work, and they still went ahead with it. It's, it's unbelievable. And, and on this one, I guess that I share largely the sentiments that have been expressed by uh, Kojo. You know, we, we live in a country where practically all our laws are disregarded with impunity, because we have zoning rules that when you intend to build a certain structure, it ought to conform to the zoning of that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You see warehouses in residential areas. You see commercial property in residential areas. You see residential property in industrial areas. Where, where does that work? So, you see, it didn't have to take the minister to, to go there. We have civil and public servants who we pay monthly, every single month. Woe betides any government delaying even the payment of salaries by three days. You hear threats upon threats of strike action. Yeah. Indeed, we have public service institutions that even threaten the government, which is the shareholder, <laughs> uh, to pay up its indebtedness to its own company, failing which they'll go on strike. You heard it? Yeah. But when it comes to the performance of their functions for which we pay them, nobody wants to do his work. So heads must rule. Absolutely. Without a doubt. And I think that the minister should move beyond going to... Indeed, yesterday he indicated that everybody who is within the chain, including city officials yeah. who granted permits, for once, and I hope and pray that we do not politicize decisions that are taken by political authority that impact the well-being of all of us. We see our streets. Let the AMA begin to clear the streets of hawkers. They will complain. That's where they end their livelihood. And many a time you hear political parties jump into their defense. That, oh, when we come, we will allow you to come back. But have you not done it before? It's absolutely, so that's what I'm saying. Mm. I agree. Should we continue on that path until when? So if you are saying you agree, that means that you only do that just to get people to want to vote for you because you're fighting their cause. But in actual fact, that's wrong. Wrong. But we do it. Okay. So it's important that we, who are privileged to be put in place of service, 
not to focus on doing the right things. Because, well, I believe you me, I mean, sometimes eh, you wonder whether really, really, it's, it's worth the wow. But somebody has to do it. It's and our country. We need to build it together. Yeah. And so I urge all of us, including those who are watching us this morning, that look, sometimes we shouldn't allow the politicians to exploit us for political gain when in the long run the nation suffers exactly and i mean it's not only just the buildings we have fuel stations that have been all over up, the place you know in residential areas with and impunity areas. exactly and they've been and i hear these guys own the one next door that the mirage mm. Right? Down yeah. the street, yeah. They've completed it. Down the street. I'm sure they blocked roads There's another one during the construction was, of that one. There's another contact was and on the other side of the road. Of course, they had their way with it. that. And so, so what do you expect? That. They can go ahead and build another one. I'm sure if you go there by now, you there's know, more need. Is that right? Be done working. That's what they're saying, that even last night, they returned to site Can you imagine? to continue it, it, construction, even though there's no, uh, you know, And I think I think we should, we should, yes, we want foreigners to come into our country. We want foreign direct investment. By all means, we want their business. Mm -hmm. But they ought to obey our laws. We cannot compromise on that at but all. We are supposed and to we are so, Absolutely. The that's, that's why I said that people get paid. I'm Bella, sure that today is 20 what? Bella. 19th. I've been trying to do papers mm -hmm. on a plot of land I have in Achimoto. It's been three years. Okay. Three years. What will be the motivation years. to go and do what and is right? Exactly. And, and it is, and it is, I'm not even doing it myself. I have engaged a, a very prominent law firm mm -hmm. to do it. And it's gone on for three years. So some of the officials who are where they are also need to be looked at. And I will urge the political authorities in this country to look, look, I can't sit here and say that it's one government that has caused it to happen. It's happened over time, like like I like say. Yeah. And those people who are criticizing the minister for going there. Are they actually people criticizing the minister? Some people have seen it. Should 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 I think they should give him a break? If it has to take him, then it has to take him. There are many people who live around those places who are really suffering. I mean, imagine you are, you are living next to a plot of land. Somebody sells his land. The next moment, somebody has dug a 20-meter hole down there mm -hmm. and every part of your house is cracked. The question, however, is if the minister has started on this tandem, is he going to continue? Are we going to see let's, him? You know, let's hope that it's not his job, per se. So let's hope that he has initiated it and somehow or the other it will be picked up by the right authorities yeah. and this, this thing will stop. It Definitely. has to stop somewhere. It has to and we hope that it does. I would like to commend the minister as well and well uh, a caution to people who are also constructing and go about their business um, without permits and without the right processes as well. So, I've so been speaking Bella, to I hope, I hope Honorable Kwesia Mwakwata is not on the chopping list, the New Year's chopping list. I think. You think because of this he should be... Okay. I'm just worried. Okay. All right. So that means that at least, course, I mean, at least now we know that you, you can yeah, respect the NDC, our friends to respect one minister is performing. So we'll hope for more. One, anyways, over, one over 120. One over 120. Like, so, Andrew Ejapa Messi. You put that argument of one Well, that's what he said. You had 80 and you were paying them double. One, one, well, I was speaking to Andrew Ejapa Messi, MP, secondly, and Kredo Chimbo, the former executive secretary, Ghana, free zones. Do you have any Christmas messages to give out before we go? Yes, let, I, let yeah. me wish everybody a very Merry Christmas. Um, enjoy the Christmas as much as you can, even though um, times are not exactly what they should be. Um, but uh, please don't drink and drive. If you okay. drive, don't drink. And um, if you drink, don't drive. All right. So that's, that's what it is. There are too many incidences that happen over Christmas because of carelessness. Don't be careless. Exactly. And, don't um, be... Andrew, uh, is your party giving us some money for Christmas? 
Well, people who earn their just okay. and legitimate income. So no freebies for us? Oh, of course. Where is the freebies? Okay. Uh, government yeah. operates. Christmas message, by the way. Yes, certainly. Yes, it's a castle. Yes, it's a castle. So, yeah, I'm about to go. That's why we are not going to It's a castle. So, yeah, I'm about to Christmas message. I am about to go. Iron and steel. Should I leave there? It's set up an integrated industry. Is that your Christmas message? Of course. I will have to respond. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yes, it's a castle. Yeah, I'm about to go. All our cherished viewers this morning. To all Ghanaians who are listening to us. Of course, Christmas is a time of celebration, yeah. uh, particularly for we, the Christians, it symbolizes the birth of Christ, our Savior. Uh, of course, uh, as we make merry, uh, I guess that is important that we reflect as well, take stock of the year's activities, uh, because clearly Christmas coincides with the advent of a new year. Yeah. And, and, and that 2020, all the good things that this government has been doing uh, it's been consolidated, can only drive the growth of this country's mm. uh, prosperity. All and right. We all will be the better for it. And 2020 all will right. definitely be a good year. Thank you. And good morning to Echo Vincent. Uh, he's the PRO for the Ministry of Education. He says good morning to you, HFMS. The time is up. We have to go, unfortunately. Time is up. We have to. Ha happy birthday to your son, unfortunately. But we have to go. That's my daughter.